What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. As always, I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ah, Welcome. This is episode 114 of the Sales Wolves podcast. And in this episode, we're actually going to take you offset to a networking event that I went to yesterday. I say it was a networking event. It was an event about networking. Well, I guess there was some networking that took place as well, but it was called Networking 101. And I was asked to speak, tell a little bit of my story and give some of my tips and my advice on networking, as well as talk about an organization or a group uh, that I helped create with a business partner called GVL Hustle. And I think you guys will get a lot out of it. It's something that I haven't really talked about uh, a lot, uh, which, it, which is this aspect of networking in this idea that it is a long-term gain and it's more about going deep and building re- relationships with people uh, that will stand the test of time rather than going shallow with a bunch of random people and never really getting to know them, getting to connect with them and getting to provide value with them. So I think you guys will get a lot out of this episode, especially those of you obviously in the Sales Wolves podcast that are in sales. And so with that, I hope you enjoy this episode. But my story really started about four and a half years ago. Uh, Rock bottom for me. Dead broke, depressed, out of shape, uh, in debt, just was winning in all areas of life. Um, I had gone through a failed marriage, a failed business, and unfortunately had been playing the victim for about two years, playing the blame game. It was everybody else's fault, spouse's fault, business's fault, business partner's fault. And ultimately, finally came to this realization that I was exactly where I was in my life because of all the decisions that I had made, because of all the choices that I had made, because of the things that I had done. It was all my fault. And the encouragement in that was understanding that if I got myself into that situation, I could get myself out of it. And so it was this process of taking ownership of those fingers that were pointed at other people, finally pointing them back at myself. And it's a liberating feeling for those of you that have gone through that process of fully taking ownership of your life. And once I took ownership, then I started waging war on personal change. I say waging war because it wasn't just self-development or started reading or listening to positive messages or you know, growing myself. I knew that I was in such a bad position that I had to absolutely wage war on personal change to get myself not only out of that position, but to get myself to ultimately where I wanted to be. And so for me, that looked looked like a lot of work and it looked like an uphill battle, uh, but I was up for the challenge. Again, I knew that I had gotten myself into it and it wasn't easy to get myself into it. I was really good at the things that I did, the, the harmful, damaging things in my life. And so I knew I had the work ethic to get myself there so I could have the work ethic to get myself out of it. And so for me, that process over the next four and a half years, 12 months later made over 300 grand. 12 months later made over 450. 12 months later made over 650. 12 months later became part owner of an organization. We did a little over 8 million last year in revenue um, throughout the country. And again, there's no specific skill talent, ability that I have. Uh, My favorite phrase to describe myself is I'm just an ordinary guy doing extraordinary things by my willingness to put in the extra. And that extra is just work. And so as we're sitting here talking about networking and everyone says, oh, I want to become a better networker. Oh, I had these goals. And I love that Marlana focused on, on the goals that we have within networking. My question to you is how, how bad do you really want it? Because we all say we want to be successful, but our actions say something very different. We all say that we want to grow our network and that our network is our net worth and all these things like that, but do our actions prove that on a day-to-day basis? Are the relationships that we're building through networking proving that? Do our actions match our ambitions? It's great to have big goals, but it all comes down to the willingness to put in the work to achieve those goals. And I've really been caught up lately in in this idea. I feel like so many people have just settled in life, settled for a life of mediocrity, settled for a life of of small dreams, small goals that they can attain. And I just don't believe it's because people don't have big dreams. Like you ever hear someone that says like, I don't need a car like that, or I don't need a house like that, or I don't know what I would even do with a watch like that. 
Sure you do. <laughs> you would absolutely love a house like that. You would absolutely <laughs> love a car like that. You would absolutely love to, I don't need, I don't need to make that much money. It's almost like they're, they're putting down the idea of making that much money. They would absolutely love it. They have just come to the realization that they're not willing to put in the work to get those things. And I believe that we truly all have the capacity and the potential to have whatever in the world we want. It just boils down to our willingness to put in the work. Like that's, that's, that's the beginning, the end, it all boils down to the work. And so for me, networking wise, at that time when I was really waging war on personal change, becoming a better version of myself, all of these things that Marlana went over uh, in such great detail today about auditing my inner circle, about finding new relationships, about eliminating old relationships, some mentors came into my life and they gave me an opportunity in the insurance business. Uh, I, often jokingly say if they were in the rubber band business that I'd be the greatest rubber band salesman standing before you. They were in insurance, no interest in insurance, but it was the opportunity that I had at the time. And it was something that they poured into me affirmations that, hey, I could go out and, and have success in this and really believe more in me than I believed in myself. Very similar uh, to Marlana's story, story at the beginning uh, of this morning. And through that mentorship and through that relationship and through the other relationships that they helped bring into my life, my life was forever changed. And so I found myself about two years into that journey after making 300 grand, 12 months later, 450. And I realized that the biggest mistake that I had made was not documenting that process. The fact that I don't have video footage of me when I was at rock bottom haunts me to this day. But the past is the past. I knew that the second biggest mistake I could make would be not, document my life move, not, not documenting my life moving forward. And so at that point, I went all in on social media. Um, for those of you that have seen any of the stuff that I put out, you may have not have seen any of it, which I, I hope none of you have seen any of it, and that this is all new and, and fresh to you. Uh, but I, docu I started documenting my life all in the good, the bad, the ugly, because I saw this gap on social media. If someone, the average person in America, if they wanted to go online, specifically if they wanted to go to social media and learn something, or if they just wanted to be motivated, wanted to get inspired in that day, they really only had two types of people they could go to. The first uh, was the multi, multi-millionaire, the person that was extremely successful, which is awesome, and you can learn a lot from those people, but the reality is it's not relatable. The infrastructure that they have built around them, yes? I must disagree. You learn not from the successful, you learn from the user. Gotcha. Agree to disagree. So, you know, it's not relatable. The, the infrastructure that they have built around them, the environment that they live in, the lifestyle that they live in, the average person is not going to gain as much from that person. The second person they can go to on social media is the person faking that they're that. And that's really all you see on social media. So I wanted to fill in that gap. I had done something unique, going from being flat broke. I had to borrow the money to get involved in the business in insurance to making 300 to 450. It was unique, but it wasn't way out there. And so I wanted to document the whole journey. I wanted to show people that it's not easy to be successful. It's incredibly difficult to live an extraordinary life. It's incredibly difficult to make half a million dollars a year, to make a million dollars a year, to build a successful business. There's nothing easy about it. The steps and the processes can be simple, but it is all going to boil down to the amount of hard work that you're putting in on a daily basis. I wanted to show people what that looked like in a transparent and authentic way that didn't sugarcoat this whole thing. Because on the backside of that, I wasn't monetizing it. I didn't have a program I was going to sell you. See, a lot of people on social media, they want to show you how easy it is because they have a magic program that they're going to sell you that's going to make this whole complex world a whole lot easier. So I'm going to put out there six weeks to six figures, six months to six million, you know, all these different things that you see out there. My e-book, mastermind, program, this, that. And I'm going to take all this process that's super difficult and complex, and I'm going to show you that's really not that easy if you follow my program. I just I wanted no part in that whatsoever. I wanted to go show people what it was really like and never ask for anything uh, in return from anyone. And so for the last two years, that's what I've done, put out over 5,000 pieces of content on social media. I've got two podcasts, one's called the Sales Wolf Podcast, one's called the uh, Breadwinner Podcast. I've got a daily vlog, uh, actually two daily vlogs now, and a weekly vlog, uh, motivational brand. We've got a weekly reach of over 49 million people uh, through all the different platforms on social media. Just documenting my life 
and showing everything. Showing the Facebook Lives where I'm in my you know, car literally crying because I'm about to go into a hotel for the 11th night in a row and I miss my family. I miss my daughter. Why am I out here with this stupid goal of selling this many policies when I should be at home right now? Like showing the real stuff. And so to me, that's become my big passion. It's my legacy that I want to live and leave uh, for everyone is this idea of being able to document your life using social media as a tool. And I want to really pause there. Social media is a tool. For those of you, especially in the older generation that are in here, we love to hate on social media. We love to say social media is making us more disconnected. It's a tool. You're just using it wrong. We've never been more connected. You, you look at a, a young person and you say, oh, they're not talking to anyone. It's because they're talking to everyone. It depends on how you're using it. All of my best friends in the world right now, I met through a random DM on Instagram that created a conversation on Instagram, that created a conversation on the phone, that created an event that we went to, and now these are the people that I talk to every single day. So they're just tools. And we have a short memory, right? Like we forget like what we were doing before social, social media. As though like we were out you know, doing experiments to find the cure for cancer or you know, creating like Nobel Prize winning you know, theses. Like we were watching TV, right? Like, like that's what we were doing with that time. And we remember like when we were a kid and we went home after school and we called Sally on the phone on the landline and Sally wasn't at home so we went outside and like you know, kicked a can for half an hour. Like we forget about that. Like now these kids, they have access to be able to connect with anyone and everyone in the world. And so it's a tool, it's just depending on, on how you're using it. But networking is the best tool. And whether you're using it through social media or in person, because we can argue, you know, which is better, obviously a person to person connection is absolutely, absolutely incredible. But there's also people that we can connect with on social media that are on another part of the world that we would never be able to have that person-to-person -person connect connection with. But in regards to so, uh, networking as a whole, I love this phrase uh, a friend of mine uh, coined called puddle love, puddle love. Did you realize that you can drown in three inches of water? You can drown in three inches of water. The reality is that's where the majority of our conversations live that's where 99% of social media lives. They live in that, in that three inches. And so when it comes to networking, it's all about building relationships. I, in my life, in the things that I wanna do, my, you know, my aspirations, I just have zero time for small talk. I have zero time for talking about the weather or about sports or about you know, other random things that really don't serve me or don't serve that person. And so when I go to networking events, I'm going to find two, maybe three people. But if I just find one, for me, that was a win. Because I'm gonna talk to that person and I wanna go deep. I wanna get to know them. I wanna know, you know, what are they struggling with right now? What's their biggest wins? What there's, what's their biggest recent losses? How can I provide them value? And I think it takes a different approach, a different perspective on networking in that it's way more of a long-term vision than we realize. And because most people that are in networking are salespeople, or there's someone that's building a business and you are very transactional and you have to have things that, you know, I need to meet my quota this month, I need to you know, build my business this month, I need to make something, I, I need to go to this event that they're having at the Commerce Club tonight and I gotta find somebody that's gonna be that connection that brings that business in that makes it happen this month. It's just, it just doesn't happen like that. And so it creates a long-term vision of building real relationships with people and understanding that that's gonna take time. But going into those relationships with the attitude of, servant, uh, of serving, of being a servant, how can I provide value to this person? It's this idea of disproportionate value. I never want to be in a relationship with anyone where the amount of pr value that I have provided is less than the amount of value they have provided me. That makes me extremely uncomfortable. I don't wanna ever feel like someone has provided me more value than I've provided them. And so especially on the front end when you meet someone, I'm genuinely not just, how can I help you? Or let me know if there's anything I can do to be of service to you. 
like those are just lines that they sound they sound okay, I guess. But like genuinely, when you're meeting someone, like like man, what what's the biggest struggle in your business right now? What's the biggest thing that you're trying to get out of this event? What's the biggest thing that you're working on this month, this quarter, this year? And then taking time to think about how you can possibly provide them value and help them solve those issues, those struggles, or help them make that connection that could become that next big client that they bring on, or or could be that big solution to the to the problem that they ultimately have. But it's just a completely different mindset. But when you live that way, when you live in this, in this world of just providing value to others, it's providing value without the expectation of anything in return. So I'm not saying, okay, I'm going to meet Sally and I'm going to provide three things of value to Sally. But the fourth time I talk to her, I'm going to ask her for something big. And that's when I'm going to really get her. Like it's, so it's not this expectation of what I can get from Sally but it's an understanding that it's just the way the world works. Like you put good stuff out, you do the right things, you have the right intent, and good things are gonna happen. Karma's practical, Wherever, however you wanna say it. The world will never be indebted to you. You can't outgive God. However, whatever lens or framework you wanna put around it, it's just the way the world works. And so when you give, you understand that you'll always get it back. And it's just been my experience that you'll get it back 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 fold when it's the actual intent that you have in the very first place. And so that's just a little bit of you know, my mindset on networking. It's about going deep and building real relationships with fewer people than going wide in these shallow puddle love type conversations that we're not really getting anything from anyways. And so when it came to creating GVL Hustle, it's, it's kind of a funny story. It's my, my business partner in GVL Hustle, I say business partner, it's just a friend, his neighbor. Uh, we had this idea, we were both in this upper trajectory of always growing ourselves and trying to become the best versions of ourselves, reaching our full potential. We're listening to podcasts, creating podcasts, listening to, you know, or watching different YouTube series, always constantly reading books and, and talking about those with each other. And we were like, where do we go to find other people that are like us? You know, last year I spent 238 nights in a hotel. I don't have a lot of time to just like aimlessly walk around. I quit drinking 18 months ago, so I don't go to bars to meet people. So I'm like, le legitimately, like, like, where do I go to find someone that's like me? And we asked ourselves this question for like a year, and finally I was like, screw it. We're going to go create it. And so it started out with literally us just creating a t-shirt that said GVL Hustle on it. We're like, oh, let's just create a t-shirt, see what happens. <laughs> and so we start wearing these t-shirts around town, and like all, the, all of a sudden people start asking, like, what is, it? What is GVL Hustle? I was like, ah, I don't really know. What do you think it is? <laughs> They're like, oh, it sounds like this like really cool group of people that are, you know, like meeting and you know talking about. I'm like, it's that for sure. <laughs> and then somebody else would say like, what's what is GV Hustle? I'm like, I, I, what what does it mean to you? And, and every time we would ask somebody and we get somebody's feedback, we're like, man, it could be a lot of things. <laughs> This is pretty cool. Let's kind of condense that into, uh, into something that would make sense. And you know, nothing against any of the other networking groups in Greenville. I just feel like networking traditionally is the walk in, get my two drink tickets, shake a couple hands, pass out a couple business cards, check my box for my boss that I came, and, and out the door. And nothing was, no real relationships were being built. No one's really, like, so, so this, especially as men, you walk around, hey, how's it going? Great. Hey, how's it going? Awesome. Hey, how's it going? Can't complain. How are you? When in the meantime, they're cheating on their wife, kids hate them, business is barely, barely staying afloat. We walk around like, hey, hey, here's my business card. Hey. Like, like, everything's, like everything's perfectly okay. We wanted to create an environment where it's okay not to be okay, where you can be transparent, where you can be authentic, where you can build real relationships and actually talk about the stuff that people don't usually talk about. So the very essence of, of GVL Hustle was, was transparency and accountability. And in creating an event like that, it's, it's not, again, it's not easy. And in this case, it really wasn't even that simple. Because when you have a monthly event, it takes a long time to figure it out. So we've been doing this for eight months now. Um, the first one, we had 75 people just randomly show up. I think it was just because it was like, what is that? And the word hustle, I think maybe it was just like, that sounds interesting. I, I don't know. <laughs> and so in that, first, in that first one, I remember I stood up and, and I kind of went through this exercise of like, what does GVL hustle mean to you? And we broke into groups. And as I'm walking around, I'm like hearing a guy talking about like, like contemplating suicide two weeks prior and getting in a real conversation with somebody. And I'm walking around to this group and he's talking about how like, you know, if I don't make it, if 
I don't make things happen this month, like I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to close down my business. And I'm walking over to this corner and I'm hearing like these real conversations all of a sudden, you know, start because we created space and we were vulnerable on the front ends. Like when I told my story, I, to I talked about, you know, my marriage failure. I talked about my business failure. I talked about, you know, being at rock bottom. Ryan, my, my partner, he talked about his business failures. He talked about, we talked about the things that people don't want to talk about, which created this space and, and ultimately held space for people to have the audacity to actually talk about the things that they don't necessarily really want to talk about, but they need to talk about. And so over time, over the last you know, eight months, we we've, we've, think we've figured it out. Uh, we usually always have a, a guest speaker. Uh, we've had some incredible speakers um, so far, and a lot of really, really, really good ones that I'm looking forward to hearing from in the future. We've changed locations multiple times. Right now, uh, we're at Elf Thrifty. Uh, for those of you guys who know, it's near uh, the Wheelhouse and uh, Soul, Soul Yoga and all that right on the Swamp Rabbit. Um, we do it on the last Tuesday of each month. So this month, it's on the 30th. Um, would absolutely love you guys to come. It's like 20 bucks at the door, all you can drink, use a little bit of food. We usually have a little networking, just kind of, I say networking, it's just hanging out, having a good time, talking with people. One of the best things about it so far, which was never intended on the front end, is that it seems like every, every month there's like a core group of maybe 40, 50% that are at every single one, but then there's like a 40, 50, 60% of people that are brand new every time, uh, which is really great, I love that. Uh, part of me is like, well, what happened to those other 40 when they come back? That's okay. It's not for everybody, I promise you. Uh, but one thing that I really love that we do, we started this about four months ago, is we do Q&A. Uh, for me, myself, I thrive in a Q&A environment because for me to stand up here and talk to you about networking, like that's, that's great. But for us to really dive into some tactical Q&A where I tell them, let's get as selfish as humanly possible. Like, don't ask a question that you think might be for the benefit of the greater good of the group. Like, like no, like, yesterday this happened, and I don't know how to handle that. What would you have done? And then we usually have myself, my partner, and whoever the guest speaker is that week, uh, we answer the questions. If we don't know, we say we don't know, but we point them in the right direction. And it's been so cool to see uh, the things that have played out from that. Uh, the very first time we did that, we had a guy asking about you know, how to start a podcast, which you know, I have two, and Ryan has one. So you know, we, we talked about some of that, and I said, man, at the end of the day, like, you just gotta start it. Like, none of this stuff really matters. Just, just start the podcast. I was like, will you start it? Will you start it? Yes, okay, cool. We come back a month later, and he's had like 35 episodes of his podcast. It was like the coolest thing ever to see someone that actually asked a question, got some advice, and implemented it, and actually did something. And so it's just been a really, it's been a really awesome experience uh, creating this group of people. It's, you know, a lot of it is like family now. Um, but again, with this basis of transparency and vulnerability and being able to walk in when, you know, you've been struggling all week and you need someone. I, I love this phrase of, and it's a phrase that we use in our business, but I'll use it in the context of, of this event. Like there are gonna be times in your life where you're just absolutely crushing it. And in those times, GVL Hustle or whatever events you go to, those events, those people need you. But then there's gonna be times in your life where you're absolutely getting crushed. Like you don't know which way is up, you don't know what you're gonna do to make it through the day. And that's when you need GVL Hustle, or you need those events, or you need those people. And so wherever you are right now in your life, in your world, it's there for you on both ends. But it takes humility, it takes dropping your ego, which is not easy, but it's the most important thing you could ever do in business and in life. It takes those things to be able to put yourself in an environment to really grow and to really connect. Like I love how Marlana talked about the, you know, the connection, that that's really ultimately what networking is, it's connecting. In order for you to connect to another person, you have to take down that facade. You have to take down that fake, everything's great, everything's awesome, I'm the best. You have to take that stuff down and you have to be real with other people. And we just feel like we've created a, an ideal environment 
to create those conversations, to create those connections. And uh, it's been super powerful. Um, you can check it out. Uh, you can find me on, on anywhere online um, at Tyler Jack Harris. So Instagram, Facebook, TylerJackHarris.com, all that good stuff. Uh, but GVL Hustle is just at GVL Hustle. So Instagram, Facebook, GVLHustle.com. Uh, would absolutely love to have you. If you have any questions for me, um, I answer every single message, whether it be Facebook, Instagram. And again, the power of social media, it is a tool. But if you use it for a place to have those shallow conversations, then it's just gonna be that. But if you use it as a place to connect with specific people, get to know them, uh, ask them deep questions, get, get engaged, provide value to them, then amazing things can happen. Like the stories that we heard earlier were so incredible to hear. I'm seeing stories like that play out in my own life and the lives of others that started on social media. Marlana sent me a Facebook message. It's the only reason I'm here today. You sent me a Facebook message, we did not, today was the first day we met. But that's what, yeah, but that's, but that's, why, but that's why we're here. Like last, last week, last week I, I flew to LA and I did 11 podcast interviews with 11 of the most powerful, incredible people that I've ever met in my entire life. The most impactful conversations that I've ever had in my life. Every single one of those conversations started with a random DM. One of them, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Erwin McManus of uh, Mosaic Church. This guy just, he's tons of books. Um, the, his latest one, The Way of the Warrior. Um, I sat down with him for 30 minutes and it absolutely changed my life. It was a random DM at one o'clock in the morning that I sent him and just told him how much of an impact his videos and his sermons and his books have made on my life that I would love to be able to sit down with him for half an hour. Um, randomly answered, yeah, let's set it up. And you know, last week we sat down together. So again, I encourage you, networking is huge. It's an integral part of your business. If you treat it the right way, so is social media. So those of you that have been on the sidelines, it's not going anywhere. Like social media is not gonna get any less popular. It's only gonna get more and more and more, not just important, but absolutely necessary to sustain yourself in business. And over the next three to five years, there's really a land grab in creating a personal brand, which just so you know, all a personal brand is, is your reputation online. It's nothing more complicated. Again, people wanna sell you stuff to make it more complicated so that they can unpack it for you and make it easy. All it is is your personal brand, is your reputation. This, in this way, your reputation on social media. But never has it been more important to create that brand now because other people are doing it and they're doing it at scale and there will be a point where you just won't be able to catch up. And I know that's daunting and I know that may be really discouraging to hear, but I just started this two years ago. Just started doing this two years ago. And again, just like anything else in life, if you wanna do extraordinary things, if you wanna live an extraordinary life, then you're gonna to have to put in an extraordinary amount of work. Um, there's no cheat, hack, system, there's, there's nothing. And anybody that tells you there is, turn around and run the opposite way. Uh, it all boils down to how much work you're willing to put in and your intent behind it. So uh, with that, we'd love to see everybody at GVO Hustle. And uh, if there's anything I can do for you in any way, and I'm not just saying that, uh, please send me a message and I would love to connect. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a different episode of the Sales Wolves podcast today. Again, this is episode 114 on networking. As always, I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow!